In this video, I'm going to be talking about solving proportions. I've written down um, four proportions here on this page. And as you can see, first of all, proportion is when two fractions are equal to each other. So these are all equal. Two thirds is equal to four sixths. One half is equal to five tenths. Two sevenths is equal to ten thirty fifths. And five fifteenths is equal to one third. So these are all proportions. What you'll notice about equal proportions or fractions that are in proportion is their diagonals always multiply to be equal. So I've done these, shown these in different colors for a reason. So 6 times 2 would be 12 and 3 times 4 would be 12. Uh, in this case 10, well, let's do the green part first, 2 times 5 is 10 and 10 times 1 is 10. Here we have 35 times 2 is 70 and 7 times 10 is 70 and here we have 3 times 5 is 15 and 15 times 1 is obviously 15. So as you can see every time you have a proportion the diagonals of the um, fractions on each side of the equation multiply to become the same number. 12, 12, 10, 10, 70, 70, and so on. Uh, these are called the means and extremes. And right now I don't actually remember which one is which. You can look that up. Uh, but the rule is this. Whenever you have two fractions, A over B, and they're equal to each other, the diagonals, A times D, will equal each other. So A times D is going to equal B times C. And we can use that to solve proportions that have variables in them. So in this first one we can say 3 times M is going to equal 30 times 8. And then we can use that to solve for M. So we can divide both sides by 3 and we get M equals um, 80. Uh, over here, I'm going to use the same technique. 4 times x is going to equal 8 times 3. Then using the division property of equality, we can see that x is going to equal 6. Um, so some of you who are watching this might be thinking, well, why waste our time doing that when it's obvious that we can just multiply on this one, the top and bottom, by 10, and we would get m as 80. And in this one over here, if we multiply the top and bottom by 2, we would figure out that x equals 6. And you'd be right. The time where that doesn't work would be here. In this um, example down here, we have um, 5y is going to be equal to 9. Now 3, there's nothing that 3 will multiply to to become 5, or no whole number. Um, and so that would be difficult to see. And so in this, in this case, the diagonal method is going to be the preferred method to solve it. So we're going to divide by 5. And the reason it wasn't obvious is because it's a fractional or a decimal answer. So it's y equals 9 fifths, uh, or whatever that would be. Uh, 1 in 1 1.8, I guess. Um, and so when the letter represents a fractional answer or a decimal answer, uh, it wouldn't really be obvious to multiply it by something. So that's why this diagonal method is preferred. Another time where it's preferred is when you have uh, something a little more complicated in your fraction. Here, it wouldn't be obvious to me what to multiply each thing by. And so we're going to want to use the diagonal multiplication method. So the top here is q plus 7, uh, sorry, q plus 2. We're going to multiply that by this 7 here. And we know because we've done it four times, we have a rule, we know that the diagonals will be equal. So that is going to equal 2q minus 11. So here we have a diagonal and a diagonal. Now, if we use the distributive property to simplify the left side, and then also to simplify the right side, now we can use the 
subtraction property of equality to get rid of the Q on this side. So now we're left with 14 over here. We've got three Qs minus 55 over here. We're getting closer to figuring out what Q is. So I'm going to add 55 to both sides, both sides, plus 55. Let's move this down a little bit. So now we got um, 69 equals 3Q. And if we divide by 3, we will have our answer. So Q is going to equal 23. And usually we do it in this order. So Q is 23. Um, a good idea after doing this many calculations where there's lots of opportunities to make a mistake is to plug that into our original equation and see if we were right. So 23. So in this case, we would have... Uh, 25 over 5, so 25 over 5, is that equal to, uh, 23 times 2 is 46, minus 11 is 35 over 7, so in this case we have a 5, and in this case we have a 5, so we know that this is correct. Alright, so some types of problems that we can use a proportion to solve would be something like this. We have an eight ounce can of orange juice, contains about 97 milligrams of vitamin C. About how many milligrams of vitamin C are there in a 12 ounce can of orange juice? Okay, so we can set up a proportion. We can say there's several ways to set it up, um, but it's really important to uh, label how you're setting it up so you keep everything in the right spot. So if we have ounces of OJ on the top and vitamin C on the bottom, we can set up a proportion. So when there's 8 ounces of OJ, we get 97 milligrams of vitamin C. And that's going to equal how many milligrams of vitamin C? Uh, we'll call that M. We'll say M equals milligrams of vitamin C. There we go. So the vitamin C and for 12 ounce can of orange juice. And then using the diagonal method, the, I guess it's called the cross products property of a proportion, uh, we'll see that 8 times M is going to equal 97 times 12. Uh, so we know, uh, here's another tip. You can use this if you want. It'll speed things up if you do. Uh, we know that we're going to have to multiply 97 times 12, which is going to be a pretty decent sized number, probably just over 1,000. And then we're going to divide by 8. Now, we can divide by 8 right now and then start reducing. So if I write this, I'll have m equals, and then 12 divided by 8 uh, that'll be uh, 6 and 4, and then we can reduce that further to be 3 and 2. And so we're going to end up with 97 times 3, which is 100 times 3, so 300 minus 9, so 291 over 2. If we wanted, we could make that a decimal, which would be, I don't know, 145 and a half, maybe? 45.5. Something like that. And that is our answer. That's how many milligrams of orange juice would be in a 12 ounce can. Uh, we can see if that makes sense. Kind of um, 12 ounces is 8 plus another half of an 8. So we're, we should be looking at uh, about 100 plus another 50. So that's pretty close. So that we can be pretty confident in our answer. So 145.5 um, milligrams of vitamin C. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.